Good afternoon and welcome to today's IAC webinar, Uploading Cases to Your IAC Application, a How-To Guide. My name is Kelly Baer and I am the Creative Design Manager with Marketing Communications at IAC. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to review a few technical matters and let you know how you can participate in today's session. Today's webinar will be interactive, so we encourage you to submit questions. To do so, use the questions tab located on the left side of your screen. Please submit your questions anytime during the webinar as we will monitor questions throughout the presentation and try to answer as many of them as possible during the Q&A period. On the left sidebar, please note the polling tab. Today's webinar will feature two live poll questions for our audience. Also on the left sidebar, please note the resources tab. Click this tab for a link to today's handout, a PDF copy of these PowerPoint slides. Select the file name to download the handout. Lastly, in the lower left of the player, please note the request support button. If you experience any technical problems during this webinar, click this button. A technical expert will be there to assist you with any issues you may have. For those who like to take notes during the presentation, look to the right of the slides and click the notes tab. There you will see a white text box where you can take notes on today's webinar. These notes will be emailed to you automatically at the end of the session. Today's presentation is being recorded and will be posted at a later time for on-demand viewing. Please note, no continuing education credit is being issued for this webinar. While the archive of this presentation will be made available in the IAC webinar portal, there will be no post-webinar survey or certificate given for attending this event. And now I would like to introduce our IAC presenters. With us today are Maria Costello, Lead Clinical Director and Director of Accreditation for Nuclear PET, and Cindy Shavat, Director of Compliance and Accreditation Processes. Today's presentation is intended to provide applicant facilities with the latest information and guidance on the process of case uploads. And with that said, I will now turn this webinar over to Maria Costello. Maria? Thank you, Kelly, and thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. Um, as Kelly mentioned, this is just a, a big overview and introduction to our image share, um, which is our secure up image uploading system. And um, because as of January, this will be the required method to send um, cases to us. So the main objectives for this webinar is that you should be able to discuss the benefits of uploading images, define the steps to uploading your images, and identify and explain common uploading obstacles. There are several benefits to, to submitting the images this way. It's a more efficient way to assess your facility's interpretive and technical quality. It will provide more rapid processing of your facility's application, and IAC's HIPAA compliant secure image sharing service ensures safe submission of images. Before we go any further um, into the steps of uploading your images, I just wanna do a quick poll. Um, which of the IAC accreditation programs are you applying? Feel free to select more than one. Um, we just wanna get an idea of, of who is on the webinar. Okay, great. We have a pretty, um, good size group and variety. Um, I do see that there are some that are on for um, cardiac cath and EP as well as vein center. Um, you all have a slightly different application process and you'll be provided with the separate instructions at submission. Um, feel free to submit any questions to us and we'll make sure um, that those questions get uh, directed to uh, Frank Vermeeren, who is the director of uh, cardiac cath and EP, and Laura Humphreys, who is the director of Vein Center. So now let's get started. So where do you start? First, you need to complete your application questionnaire. So in other words, there has to be all green check marks on the left-hand side of that questionnaire. You are not going to upload the images into that questionnaire, but you need to have it completed and you need to complete this, the pre-submission case check. Once the pre-submission case check is complete, you will go back to your online account and you will click on the briefcase icon. That briefcase icon is gonna bring you to a case study summary page. This is the list of the case studies that you entered into your application. At each um, patient name, you will see the start icon. And so to begin the uploading process, you're gonna click the start icon next to 
that particular case study. <clears throat> the, this page is a case information page, and this is where you're going to verify the initials and study date for the images that you are going to upload. So once you've verified that those images and the study date are correct, you'll click continue. Once you click continue, you're going to make a file selection to begin uploading the case files for the patient that is listed. There are two ways you can do this. You can add a single file. That's um, if you're uploading individual files such as JPEGs or videos. You can add a folder or upload from a CD, DVD, or USB. Um, this would be a folder on your desktop and everyone knows what CDs, DVDs, or USBs are that contain the image. So if you choose the option to add a, a, a single file, um, a window will appear and you can choose the location of the file to be uploaded. And then you're gonna select the file that you intend to upload and click open. Once you click open, um, the upload selection will appear at the bottom of the page. You can choose to upload that one single file by clicking upload selection, or you can choose several other single files to include in this one upload. You will receive a confirmation summary at the completion of the upload. You may then exit the page and return to the IAC online account and repeat the process with the next case study. If you choose to add a folder, CD, CD DVD, or USB option, a window will appear so you can choose the location of the file to be uploaded. Um, this option is the most common option and it makes it the, it's, it's one of the easier options and easier ways to, to do it. Once the correct file has been chosen and open, you're gonna upload that selection up, I'm sorry, the upload selection button will appear at the bottom of the page. When you click upload selection, you will receive a message verifying how many files will be uploaded. Clicking upload in the pop-up message box completes this upload process. You again would receive a confirmation summary at the completion of the upload, and then you will exit the page and return to your online account and repeat the process with the next case study. Once you are done uploading all of your case studies, you wanna click on verify because you wanna make sure that all of the images that you uploaded are there. If you can't see those images, we can't see those images. You can view the uploaded images by downloading a zip file, which would zip all the files together or an ISO file, which will open the uploaded files as if a CD was in your computer. If you uploaded DICOM files, another option will appear under the actions heading um, and it will just say view. And this will allow you to view the uploaded files in a provided DICOM viewer instead of using the embedded viewer. At this point, you're either going to approve or replace the uploads. If you approve the uploads, you're attesting, to, you're attesting that the submitted images are the ones that you want to be reviewed for your accreditation application and no further case information will be requested. If you wanna replace your images, your images um, are incorrect or missing, um, then you wanna start the upload process over for this case. The system will overwrite the original upload with the new information. Once you approve the images, you can't replace those images. So make sure that you look at the images that you're gonna submit, make sure that if you're supposed to have moving images that they're there. Um, it's really, this step is really, really important. But once you get done doing this and you've approved all your images, then that's when you are gonna click the finalize application submission. This is gonna return you to the online application so that you can submit it. You're gonna follow the directions to finalize the application submission. There are several steps to this. So once you click finalize application submission, it's going to bring you to another step. You're gonna to have to generate an invoice. You're gonna to have to tell us which way you're submitting the payment and then it would be the final submit. Make sure you complete all of those steps because if you don't, we cannot review your application until you do. So I know I went over those steps really, really quickly. Um, but we do, we will have time at the end for questions um, and a few uh, obstacles will be discussed at the end as well. The next 
upload feature that I want to discuss is the delay material upload. Um, what this is, is after you've received your decision, sometimes we have to request additional information um, to make sure that you're compliant with the standards. Instead of mailing all of this to us or um, anything like that, we have created a way for you to upload this directly to our system, which again, makes it more efficient. It's HIPAA compliant. You don't have to worry about things getting lost or making sure that they get to us on time. So what you're going to do is once you've received that notification and you have everything together that we've asked for, you're gonna go into your online account. You will see under the available actions that there's an icon that looks like a little folder with an arrow in it. You are gonna click that. Any files um, that need, which would be any documents that you needed to submit, any protocols, anything like that, those will be uploaded directly. You can drag and drop them in or you can select them and those will directly be added to the document section. If we request any images from you, you need to scroll down further on the page and that's where you will see the case study. And um, for some divisions or modalities, we would request QC images. And that, that's where you'll see it is at the bottom of the page. I, I couldn't get this all in one page so you could see exactly what it looked like. So it's on two, but really it's just the bottom of the page. For the uploading of images, you'll follow the same process as you did in the application. You click start, except at this point um, with the images, you would have to type in whichever patient's name you were resubmitting to us, but you would go through the same uploading process. Once you've uploaded all of your images and all of your documents, um, you're going to finalize your submission. And that's the way we'll know that you're done and you're ready for us to review that submission. So once you finalize the submission, that's when it'll get reviewed. If you forget to finalize the submission, you will see a notice within um, under the applications tab under available actions that will tell you that you haven't finalized the submission of this material and you need to do that before we can review it. So now onto the, some common obstacles that facilities experience when, um, when they are uploading. Um, the user can't find where in the application questionnaire they need to upload. As I mentioned, uploading of images cannot occur until after the pre-submission case check is complete. The images do not get uploaded into the questionnaire. The user clicks start when they're going to upload the case study, but no new window opens so they can begin uploading. This happens sometimes when you're using Internet Explorer and a different browser such as Chrome needs to be used. user cannot find their still images. The still images stack and it looks like they're not there. So you would have to flip through those one by one. Um, again, the user clicked approve and then realized the study they uploaded was wrong and they want to replace it. The study cannot be replaced in the IAC account after approving it. You would need to contact us for further instructions. Some other helpful tips is if when you are uploading case study images, um, you know, as I mentioned you need to be able to view them on a regular computer or we're not going to be able to view them. The quickest and easiest way to upload is if you are going to send us a CD or a DVD or a, a USB flash drive, um, you wanna take that and, and upload from there. Using a flash drive is going to be the quickest route for you to use to upload the images. We are highly, highly encouraging this process as it's going to be required as of January, 2021. Um, and now I just have another poll question. Since this was a really quick instruction and we wanna leave plenty of time for questions, we also welcome your feedback. So can you please provide us with any comments or suggestions about today's brief instructional webinar, but we have a lot of time for questions. And like I said, I know I went really quick with this, um, but you will have a copy of the slide. You can call us any time for any explanation. Um... Okay, well, at this time, we will begin the Q&A session. You can feel free to keep answering your poll question. Um, from IAC, I would like to introduce our Q&A panelists representing each division. We have Marge Hutchison, Katie Gibson, Nancy Merrill, Brandy Mertz and Corey Mabry with us today, and they will assist Cindy with the Q&A session. 
Cindy, would you like to start us off? Absolutely. Thank you, Kelly. And thanks, everybody, for um, taking the time to meet with us today. Um, I will start off with a question, and I'm going to have Brandy answer this one. And the question was, do we need to um, anonymize the exams that we send in? Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, no, you do not. It's um, just like any other submission you send to the IAC. Um, everything is HIPAA compliant. So put everything on the CD that you would, or on the upload that you would on the CD. The next question we have was, um, are, no, are DVDs no longer accepted? Maria, would you like to answer that one? Yes. So um, as of January, they will not be accepted. Um, we want everyone to upload their images um, electronically. If you're able to put the images on a DVD, CD, flash drive, you will be able to upload them to the system. You would just use that as your option um, when uploading. Thank you. Um, there was a question if the instructions after final submission are gonna be available after this session. Katie, would you like to answer that one? Sure, um, you will be able to see these instructions, are, um, let's see, when you upload, when you get to the, that part in your application, there will be a PDF of the instructions for you to click on. Um, and then also, if you happen to get delay material uh, that needs to be uploaded, then you would also get that instruction when you land on that page so that that will be embedded. This uh, webinar will also be available on our all the websites. Uh, you know, on our webinar page for viewing again. Um, and if you still need the, a copy of these instructions, we can send them to you as well. So you can reach out to us at any time and we'll send you all the instructions. We wanna make it easy for you. Thank you, Katie. Maria, this one's um, about pet images. Um, do we accept DICOM images? And um, can we attach a folder for pet fused images and slice view? We do accept DICOM images, but you need to keep in mind that if you have to, when you are uploading them, it's the same as if you were to give a patient a copy of the CD. Um, you need to make sure if there's a viewer that has to be attached, then that needs to be included. Um, you can't really just send the raw images. Uh, you should be able to upload the fused images for the PET CT. If you run into any issues, don't hesitate to contact us because we can help talk you through it. Um, all equipment is a little bit different and has its own nuances. So, you know, we may need to talk to you directly to get, get you to um, get it to upload, but there shouldn't be any issues, but don't hesitate to reach out to us. Brandy, the next question's for you. Um, the question is, what is the best format to upload images? Can I include more than one case in the upload? And actually, we got this a couple times. Um, I'll answer the second part, and then I'll leave that for you, Brandy. Currently, it has to be one case per upload, but we are working on a way to be able to bundle that. So that's to come. Um, as far as the format, it, it really depends on the facility. We don't have a um, specific type. There's DICOM, there's JPEGs, there's AVIs. It really depends on what your studies are. Um, however you burn a CD for patients, how you send it to us and you upload. So if it's um, AVIs, then that's how. Um, certain divisions do require DICOM, so check with the division before you submit. Thank you. Um, there was a question about, um, was this, is this going to be later today? And again, yes, um, we will be posting this so anybody can watch at a later date. Um, sorry, thank you for adding your questions. There is a lot of questions. Um, Maria, can you, there's a couple questions about the delay material upload option. Could you please just go through that real quick again? Just. Sure. So the delay material upload, I'm not sure if everybody can still see the slides, but I'm going to bring them back up. So 
If you receive a, a letter after the decision has been rendered that says that you were delayed accreditation and we require additional materials um, for you to be compliant, you would, once you have everything that we asked for ready to submit, you're gonna log into your online account, click on the applications tab, go to that current application and under the available actions, you will click on the icon that looks like a little, a little folder. Once you click on that icon, it will bring you to the next page where you can upload all of the documents, which would be any protocols, um, final reports, um, policies, anything like that that we ask for, QI meeting minutes. You'll upload those into that top section and you can select those files or drag and drop the files in there. If we also requested images, you'll scroll down to the bottom of that page, um, whether they're case study images or for some of the modalities, there's cute quality control images. Um, whatever we requested would be listed at the bottom and to upload those images, you're gonna do that the same way you would have done it in the application. You will click the start icon and go and from, there. from there. Once you, um, once you have everything uploaded that we asked you to submit, you're gonna scroll back to the top and click on that finalize submission button. Once you click that finalize submission button, then we will know that you are ready for us to review the material that you submitted. If you don't click the finalize submission button, you will get a notice on your, your account that does say the delay material upload process is incomplete, please finalize your submission. Um, but that is the way that we know that you've uploaded everything you want to us, you want to and that you're ready for us to review it. Thank you, Maria. Um, we have a question about, I will be creating a CD from PACS. Do I upload every file that is written from the PACS, including the viewer files? Katie, would you like to answer this question? Sure. So it, it is helpful to upload everything um, from your PAC system because you don't want to leave anything that might be proprietary to viewing something. Um, if you if you're really if you're really nimble with it, you could probably pick through and just pick the images. But um, I I say whatever your PAC system wrote to your disk is probably what you want to upload to to our system just to be sure that we can view the images. Thank you. I don't know if Brandy has anything to add to that though. So she might have some other thoughts on that. Nope, Katie got it perfect. Yay, points for me. <laughs> um, we have a question about reaccreditation and how soon they can start. Nancy, would you like to answer that question? So for the applications for their reaccreditation, it is a great benefit to submit their application within about two months, almost three months prior to their expiration date. And it is a great benefit to uh, submit these images into the online account because it's much more efficient that everything will then be reviewed. Thank you. Um, there's a question, do we need to upload the final report as well as the images? Corey, would you like to take that, that question? Absolutely, thank you, Cindy. Um, <clears throat> so in the accreditation and reaccreditation applications, the final reports are to be uploaded separately into the actual questionnaire. Um, we'll request the, the images towards the very end of the process, inclusive of uh, the case study images and, and the QC images as well. Um, so that's for the accreditation and reaccreditation uh, applications. If um, uh, case studies are requested as part of the delay process, yes, we absolutely need the reports um, in addition to the images. And um, the reports will be uploaded into a separate section um, than the images will. So. The, the short answer is yes. And thank you, Cindy. Thanks. Um, Marge, since you're on the line, there was a statement about the vein center process being different. And they asked that is the bulk of the presentation not apply to them? Would you like to answer that one? Yeah, they, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Um, 
Yeah, the uh, the vein center um, application is different in that uh, at least your initial application, uh, the cases are randomly selected. So you have to submit a list of your of your patients, a patient schedule, and then we randomly select those. So that is a little bit different. Um, the other thing is uh, we are working on the process to upload the cases uh, to the application. I believe it is a work in progress right now. So um, this may or may not apply to, to Vein Center. There are some, some questions about that. Thank you. Um, Katie, if you would like to answer this question, it is um, the studies will be submitted. Um, how long before they, I'm sorry, within how many months before the application deadline are the case studies submitted? Now, these are, this is a little bit different for each division, but Katie, would you like to answer that? Sure. If for if you're applying in echo accreditation uh, for adult echo transthoracic, you would submit studies that are 12 months from the date of submission backwards. So you can anytime within that 12 month time frame for transesophageal adult, it is also 12 months for stress echo. You're going to do 36 months. Um, and if you're doing pediatric, you can it's 12 months for uh, um, pediatric transthoracic, and it's 12 months for fetal echo, but then it is 36 months for pediatric transesophageal. And since we're lucky enough to have almost all the clinical directors on here, Maria, would you like to tell your timing and we can go through? Sure. Um, so for a nuclear pet, it is also 12 months from the submission date um, that we accept all of our studies. Um, Sometimes, depending on the type of study, there may be a little bit more flexibility because we know some of the studies aren't performed regularly. So we do have a little bit of flexibility, but for the most part, um, it's 12 months from the submission date. Thank you, Marge. Yeah, in uh, vascular, it is 12 months prior to the date of submission. However, I would like to add that, um, in the event of all of this COVID stuff, people may be having a hard time getting the right cases, getting the abnormal cases, getting the right numbers. And so if you find yourself in this situation, please call us so that we can work with you and try and figure out a solution for your concern. Yes, thanks for adding that, Marge. Right, that goes right. across the board. Right, that goes for everybody. Nancy, would you like to give your timing for cases? Oh, thank you very much. Yes, everything that is to be submitted, that is not only for the case studies and also about your CT assessments, your physicist report, your PM report, everything else. It must be performed within the past 12 months prior to the date that you're submitting your application. Thank you. Corey, would you like to speak? Sure. Thanks, Cindy. Um, my answer is going to be the same as, um, as Marge's um, and that for MRI, all the case study uh, images and the, the QC must have been performed within 12 months of the submission of the application um, with the caveat being um, that if there are any uh, issues encountered as a result of the pandemic, please feel free to reach out and, and, and we'll discuss those on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Corey. Um, hey, Cindy, I'm, yes. I, I wanna share a tip. So sure. um, we I know that there are some facilities that use a web-based, uh, like online cloud-based portal for their PAC system you can still upload from that. Um, I, Maria had showed us where you can upload a single file for each of the, the cases. If you create a Word document um, and then put the link in that document with, if it's password protected, we should be able to view it that way. Um, we have gotten some submissions of delay material that way and it's been, it's just as easy. So you would just upload that Word document with the link to whatever, uh, cloud-based storage you use, um, 
And if you have more questions about that, you can call us and we can confirm everything. Um, I don't know if Brandy has more to add to that too, but it's, it's worked very well for our cloud-based storage customers. Thank you, Katie. Um, we also had another question about uh, using flash drives and uploading that way. Brandy, would you like to answer that question? Um, flash drives are just like CDs. Um, when you go to upload, you're gonna actually get an option that you can upload the DVD, USB drive, you can upload a single file, you can upload all those. Um, so with the USB, burn it just like you would burn a CD and upload it that way. I have one more question while you're still on, Brandy, and it says, can we do a test submission once the application is open to ensure compatibility with our IT system and the uploading site? You cannot do a test upload through the app on um, the portal, the IAC portal. If you need to do a test system because you're not sure your facility's firewall or some, some if you work in a bigger hostel and they, their firewall is pretty um, stubborn, give us a call and we could probably set you up with a way to do a test outside the APA system, uh, API system. Thank you. Um, how, we have a question on how do we create an IAC account? Corey, would you like to answer that? Great, great. Um, so the IAC accounts can be accessed, uh, or how to create one can be accessed um, any web page, um, any IAC web page. Um, towards the right, um, there's there's some um, selections to be made to do that, and then you would just uh, set up the the user ID and password accordingly. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Corey. Maria, did you want to review for those that there was some volume issues at the beginning? Did you want to review just a little bit of the beginning on how to um, we get to the upload and what those screens look like? Sure. So once you um, receive the email back that you have completed the pre-submission case check, then you are going to go into your online account and you're going to click on the folder icon under the available actions. That will bring you to the case study summary page. That case study summary page is going to include all of the cases that were included in your questionnaire. From here, um, depending on what case you want to do first, you will select that, um, that patient name and you're gonna click the start icon and this is where you're gonna begin the upload process. Once you click the start icon, it will take you to the case information page. This page will verify that the initials and study date for the images that you are preparing to upload that they match. So you'll hit continue once you've verified that case information. Then you're gonna make a file selection to begin uploading the case study files or images for the patient listed. You can either do this, and we've talked about this a few times with the questions, you can either do this by adding a single file, which would be uploading individual files such as JPEGs or videos, or you can add a folder, CD, uh, add one using a folder, a CD, DVD, or a flash drive, and that was what Brandy had just explained. <clears throat> if you are adding a single file, this option, um, a window will appear and you can choose the location of the file to be uploaded. And then you're gonna select the file which you intend to upload and click open. Once the correct file has been chosen and open, the upload selection will appear at the bottom of the page. You can choose to upload that one single file by clicking upload selection, or you can choose several other single files to include in that upload. <clears throat> Once you've done the upload, you'll receive a confirmation summary at the completion of the upload, and you can then exit the page and return to the, on, the IAC online account and repeat the process with the next case study. You can also do this using a folder, CD, DVD, or USB. Um, a window will appear again, so you can choose the location of what, whether it's a folder or the um, USB or DVD, and you'll select that, and it'll bring you to the same thing um, you'll choose the file, the upload selection will appear at the bottom of the page. When you click upload selection, you'll receive a message which verifies how many files will be uploaded. 
you'll click upload in the pop-up message box. And once you do that, that'll complete the upload process. You'll get a confirmation summary at the completion of that upload. You can then exit the page, return to the online account and repeat the process with the next case study. Once you've done an, or, or you've uploaded all of your cases, or even if you just uploaded one and you wanna check it, you'll have the option to verify the images. You'll click on the verify icon next to that particular case study. Um, to view uploaded images, you're going to either download them as a zip file, which will zip the files together and a win window will appear with all the files that you've uploaded or um, download as an ISO, which will open the uploaded files as if a CD was in your computer. The important thing to keep in mind with that is if you did use a CD or a flash drive um, to upload the images, remove that from the computer before you try and verify it. Um, then once you download that, you'll take a look, make sure that everything is there. You're either going to approve the images, which is where you're gonna test that all the images are there that you wanted and, and that no and further case further information case. is requested, um, or you're going to replace the images if you have any incorrect or missing um, images, you're gonna start over for this case and the system will overwrite that original upload um, with the new information. Once you are complete, you've uploaded all your cases, you've verified all of them, that's when you're gonna finalize the application submission. And it's at this point that there are several steps in this process. You just have to keep reading the screen. This is where you're going to click finalize application submission. Then you're going to have to generate an invoice. Then you're going to have to tell us how you are paying. Once you get past that point, then there's still another submit button that you have to make sure that you click on. So just keep following the instructions. It seems like you should be done, but you're not. There's quite a few steps. So I hope that clarifies. Like I said, I know I went pretty quick with all of it, but um, you, know, you can always call and ask for with any questions. Um, and that I hope that clears up any confusion. Do Thanks. We have more questions? I have a question for you, and this is actually mostly nuclear specific. But you have, if you have hard copy images, um, how are those uploaded? So, with hard copy images, you, if you have a scanner that is medical grade and does not um, decrease the quality of the images, you can scan them as a PDF and upload that. Um, you have to be really careful with that option because a lot of times the image quality is degraded. So the best thing to do if you're questioning it is to scan the images and have your medical director take a look at them. If he can't interpret the study off of those images, they're probably not good quality to send um, because we're not gonna be able to interpret them. So that would be really the best way um, for hard copy images to be submitted. We know there is some older equipment that is still out there, and this is definitely the preferred and required as of January 2021 method, but we know there may be still some circumstances that um, there might not be any other option. Um, one other thing while, that I want to mention while I'm, I'm on this topic, we also do not accept cell phone images of case studies. Um, that is an, a violation of HIPAA, as well as it's not interpretable quality. So just to clarify that, um, we do not accept cell phone images. Now for the quality control images of the, for the camera, that's a little bit different. There is no patient information on that. And we do understand that sometimes you cannot create a file for the screen capture. So a cell phone image for that is acceptable, but still not the preferred method. Thank you, Maria. Um, Katie, um, I'm gonna give this question to you. And what if they're ready for submission by the end of December, are they still allowed to mail the materials or does it need to be uploaded? 
If you are ready to submit by December 29th, I am encouraging you to upload. Um, we have a full team of people who are going to help you through it, make it easy for you. Um, you're going to get a better turnaround time on the review as well. Um, and it is, it, it seems like it's a little daunting, but it, 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 once you get into it and you're hitting the buttons and and playing you'll, you'll get used to it and we'll help you we're not going to let you fail at uploading your cases so uh, brandy michelle all of our it and all of our clinical and application representatives will be able to assist you um we're, we're here for you we're not going to just uh leave you to the wolves with this we're, we're a team absolutely and we've had a bunch of questions about um, how to contact us Contact our main number and anybody um, who answers the phone will be able to help you if you have questions um, and get you to the right person. Maria, this question's for you about why we cannot mail our cases like before. Why are we asking that people upload now? Well, there's several, there's several reasons. Um, you know, as I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, there's, there's a lot of benefits to upload to uploading the images and I'll just bring up that slide again. Um, it is a more efficient way to assess your, the, the, the interpreting, and, oh my gosh, the interpretive and technical quality. We are able to process your application faster um, and it's also a HIPAA compliant way of doing it. The additional um, fact is that sending cases through the mail obviously is not HIPAA compliant, um, but with, COVID and everything else that's going on, it's also been very delayed. So tell, saying that you are overnighting something doesn't necessarily get to us overnight. So it really just delays the, um, it delays the process. But more importantly, we're trying to streamline this application and make it easier for you and make things more efficient and get things processed quicker. Thank you, Maria. Um, there's a couple questions about checks and payments. Brandy, do we still have to mail a check or is there an, another way? Can they pay by credit card online? You can pay by credit card through your um, IAC portal once you're done submitting. Um, once you submit, it'll go through the, the steps and you'll actually come to the cart and you can pay credit card at that point in time or you can mail a check. Um, Sometime in 2021, you should also be able to pay um, with an ACH if, if that is something your facility does as well. Thank you. There's a question about how soon um, before your expiration date for reaccreditation can you submit your application? Corey, would you like to answer this one? Absolutely. So um, you, you can be begin the reaccreditation uh, application uh, anytime after being granted. However, you may not submit the reaccreditation application any sooner than 180 days prior to your facility's expiration date. So the short answer is 180 days prior. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Corey. Um We've gone through the majority of the questions about uploading. If you want to take a minute and see if there's any last minute questions, if we didn't answer your questions um, in this webinar, we will be emailing um, you to follow up. So please don't feel like your questions aren't going to get answered, but some are very specific and we want to make sure that we're giving um, you all the information that you need. Panel, does anybody else have anything they'd like to add while we wait a moment for some further questions? I see a few uh, comments that are in the polling thing um, that are asking, is it easier for IAC to view images in DICOM format or should I include the viewer that is uploaded with my files? Um, it, include a viewer all the time when you upload your files uh, because some DICOM is proprietary to whatever software vendor 
you use. So always include that viewer. It will it will help us. And that's speaking for Echo. I don't know if the other divisions have another any anything else to say, but for Echo, always include a viewer. It doesn't and and we should be able to view it. If you have if you were able to verify that whatever you burned played on a separate computer from what you burned it on and uploaded it, we should be able to view it as well. Thanks, Katie. That's Thank you very much. Nancy, and, uh, I, like to, yes. I'm sorry. I was going to do a quick round robin and let all the directors speak on this. Okay, I would like to provide the information about the CT, dental CT, and MRI. For the case study images, they do need to be in a DICOM format. Do not submit them in a JPEG or PDF. They must be in a DICOM. However, for CT, dental CT, and MRI, for the QC phantom images, those can either be in a JPEG or a PDF or in a DICOM. That's the only option that you do have specifically for your QC phantom images. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, Marge, would you like to? Yeah, yeah, our um, vascular is exactly like Echo. Um, definitely submit the viewer. It's not gonna hurt anything. And it, uh, it may not delay the review of your cases. Otherwise, we're gonna have to come back to you and have you redo it. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Follow the same thing that Katie was saying. Maria? So for nuclear, it's pretty much the same thing too. Just make sure if you have to, um, if you have a viewer, make sure that that is attached. Absolutely. We have found that with a lot of the nuclear images, if people just submit DICOM images, we can't see, we can't see the process data, we can't see anything. So make sure that you attach um, the viewer as well. That looks uh, Cindy, um, I, I just wanted to add one thing that um, the JPEGs are good for us in vascular as well. Thank you for adding that. Um, it looks like we've gone through the, the majority of the questions. Like I said, anybody who has pretty specific questions, we will follow up with you in an email in the next few days. Um, does anybody on the panel have anything else they'd like to add? If not, Maria, I'll give it back to you. I don't have anything else to add. And I think that concludes our question and answer session. So it will go back to Kelly. Okay, great. Well, thank you again, everyone, for your questions. Thanks to our staff Q&A panelists, and a very special thank you to Maria and Cindy for this presentation today. Please feel free to contact IAC with any questions that were not answered during the Q&A session. Also, if you have not yet done so, please feel free to provide your comments or suggestions to the open poll question under the polling tab. IAC welcomes your feedback. And if you have any questions about this webinar or would like more information on IAC in general, please contact us at webinars at intersocietal.org. Once again, we thank you for joining us today and appreciate your participation.